things are starting to sound more like a finished recording, but it still sounds a little flat to me. And this is where reverb comes in. Adding reverb can add a sense of space to the audio, giving it the effect that it's actually in a real room. And if you've ever clapped your hands in a large hall or a gymnasium, you're familiar with the sound of reverb. But because we recorded this song in a small room in my house, that's what it sounds like. So by adding a reverb plugin, we can actually give the impression we're in a much larger space. Now we're going to add this plugin a little differently than we did the previous plugins. We want to add reverb to our two vocal tracks, both the main vocal as well as the harmony. So how do we do this? Because so far we've just put a plugin right on a track. Well, we actually have to create a new track for our reverb plugin that we send our vocal and harmony vocal to. And by doing this, the two vocals actually blend in the reverb, making it sound a little bit more realistic. And also, it's a little bit easier on our computer because we're only running one plugin instead of two. But let me show you how to do this. First thing we need to do is make a new track. So I'm going to double click in the track area here, and I'm going to call this vocal verb, verb for reverb. Next thing I need to do is actually make this mixer area a little taller. And that's going to show us a few more items that we couldn't see until now. So now we can actually see the individual plugins that are on each of these tracks. And we're going to add the reverb plugin to our vocal verb, which we can now do by just clicking on this track insert effects right here. And we're going to use reverb. It's right here under the Cocos filter say OK. Here it is in all its glory, but there's nothing really here right now. We're going to have to load a preset, and I really like Mellow Hall. There are actually two versions of a lot of these presets, and that's because one of them is made for Ascend, like we're doing right now, and the other is made for an insert where we're actually putting the reverb directly on the channel. So in this case, I'm going to use Audio Hacker Send Mellow Hall. Our reverb is now loaded. So how do we get the vocals to get into this reverb because they're not on the same track. Well, that's what this area just below the inserts is. This is the send area. In fact, if I just hover there, you can see it says track sends. And sends are used so that we can send audio to multiple places at once. So let me show you. All we need to do is click here and drag it to where we want to send it to. In this case, we want to send it to the vocal verb. Just drag over here, let go. And a new little window pops up telling us we've created a send to vocal verb. And that's all we really need to know. We actually don't need to do anything with this. We can just close this window. So now we have a send on our track. And it's telling us that it's sending to vocal verb right here. And this is actually kind of a little horizontal fader. We can adjust by clicking and dragging up and down over the little circle on the right hand side, like so. You can see it's reading out a number now, and that's telling us what the level is that it's sending out. So we have a fader here that's sending audio to the vocal verb. And I've got the main fader here, which is then sending to this folder track, which is then sending to our master fader. So there's a lot of things going on right now. So let's solo this vocal track and hear what's going to happen. Let's move to the end of the song. Let's go to this last verse. I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, let's play. Come what may this pain. Well, there we go. We definitely have some reverb now. Now, that's a little too much for me, so I want to turn down the send. So I'm going to just play that again, and I'm just going to adjust the send level while it's playing. Come what may this pain pass away. Our paths will cross again someday. The same old way. That seems better. It's, there's reverb there, but it doesn't seem to be uh, all encompassing. It doesn't sound like I'm singing in a cave. So now, if we want to add reverb to the harmony track, we can do the exact same thing, which is just by clicking here in the sends area and dragging over to the vocal verb. This just confirms that we're sending our harmony to the vocal verb. We'll close that. Add that to the solo, and we'll take a listen to this. Come what may this pain pass away. Uh 
Now it's actually sending more of the harmony because the harmony is up here and it's still at zero dB. So whereas this is sitting at minus 15.8. So this is actually sending quite a bit more to the reverb. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to pull the level down of the harmony that's sending to the reverb so that I get a good blend between the two. Come what may this pain will pass away Our paths will cross again someday I like that. I don't mind having a little bit extra reverb on the harmony vocal. So why not adjust the actual vocal reverb on this track fader here? Well, we could certainly do that, but that's going to change the reverb level for both tracks. And once we've got a blend we're happy with, controlling the reverb level with the track fader makes sense. But while we're getting that level, we want to use the send faders here. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to close this window, and I'm going to add the vocal verb to our vocal folder. So I'm going to go over here, click, drag, and I'm going to pull it up until that blue line just tucks in a little bit on the left and let go. So now the vocal verb is part of our vocal folder. And I'm actually going to color code it too so that it matches. That's just right clicking, track color, set to custom colors. And I'm going to use the same red. There we go. Now I know at a glance that all these tracks are related. Well, let's unsolo the vocal and the harmony and listen in context. sounding good. Let's listen a little earlier in the song so we can hear a little bit better without all the other tracks. In fact, maybe actually verse four would be the best place to hear this because that's the breakdown, kind of the breakdown verse. Here we go. Yorkshire lady, your man's gone away. He left and yet he still remains the same. That's sounding good to me. It's just adding a little bit more depth. I'm going to play that again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the reverb after the first few words. If you just watch the mute button here when it goes red, you'll know that it's off and you'll be able to hear the difference. Here we go. Yorkshire lady, your man's gone away. He left and yet you still remain. So there you go. It's off the same old way and on it just adds a little bit of extra depth and i mean you're probably only going to notice this if you're listening on good headphones or good speakers but it's the little details like that that really set your mix apart from somebody else's okay so the last thing i want to do is go into editing the reverb now i'm not going to go too deeply into this but if you want to have some fun just follow along with me here quickly I'm actually going to go to the drums and add reverb on the drum track because I just want to add it to the drum so I don't need to do a send in this case. I'll go to reverb and we're going to load bright room as an insert. I'm going to solo our drums. Actually, I'll turn this off. And we're going to just take a quick listen. Okay, now I'm going to turn our reverb on. There we go. So it's got a bit more of a snap to it now. Now, if you want to, in under the reverb generator, you can have some fun with this. You can do things like change the length. You can make the length really short but I can make the room size really big. And you think that those things go together, and they kind of do, but when you go the opposite direction with them, you can get some interesting results. Take a listen.
It's almost like a 80s kind of gated reverb sound. So there's a lot of neat little things you can do. I mean, you can also make the length really, really long and make the room size really big and hear that. It's going to sound like a cavern. Drummers in a cave. So you can, you can really do a lot to change the kind of space that the drummer's in. Now, the other thing I should point out is when we're in insert mode to adjust the level of the reverb to the dry signal, which is the unprocessed, what we call dry, you use the wet and dry faders on this side. So we want to leave our dry just at zero, so we're not touching that, and our reverb, which is the wet, it will be in the negative, but you can make sure that it fits in the mix better. So let's just hear that. Pull it right down. Turn it up. Okay, I'm going to go back to something that's a bit more like that uh, gated reverb sound we had. Which I think was around something like this. Let's hear that. Turn the damping up. And turn the, get that mix down. I don't want it to be quite so prominent. Turn it off. And on. I think I like that, but I'm going to have to hear it in the song. Let's take a listen. Excellent. Well, I'm happy with how my vocals and my drums now sound a little more lively. I'm going to play around with the rest of this and just see how good I can get this sounding. <laughs> 